So last week, we had the opportunity to spend a day out at a National Trust property called The Vine near Basingstoke, which is a large Tudor house and very impressive, definitely well worth a visit. Um, there's quite uh, some quite extensive grounds as well as um, a large house that you can you can visit. Pretty good, uh, as I say, recommended. However, on the day we went, it was very, very dull and overcast. And that gave me one or two issues, I guess, in terms of how to actually um, come away with a set of photographs that I was pleased with. Um, I took the EM1 Mark II and I took the 12 to 40 lens, which did almost all of the all of the work really. I did take the 40 to 150 with the times 1.4 converter because I knew there is a a kind of a wild uh, there's a there's a bird hide and a little bit of wildlife stuff there as well. So I wanted to take a longer lens for that. To be honest, it wasn't a long enough lens, I don't think, but you know, because the bird hide actually turns out it's quite a long way from the water and stuff like that. But anyway, um, you'll see that in, in a little bit later. So I set the camera to because it was such a dull day. I set the film the the, the profile I was using to natural rather than the muted that I usually um, photograph in. Um, and I set it also to JPEG plus RAW so that I could continue my kind of um, RAW versus JPEG comparison stuff. And it was really pretty important on this occasion to have the RAW files. And you know, on some of the shots, definitely it wouldn't have mattered too much if I just had the JPEG. But on a lot of the shots, probably the majority, I think, definitely the majority, in fact, it was really essential to have the JPEGs for me so that I could do some post-processing. Um, and we'll go through some of the individual shots in a minute, but five kind of reasons why it was important to have the raw files. Partly, uh, number one, because it was so overcast, there were a lot of heavy shadow areas. And whilst you, I don't always want to pull the shadows up, there were one or two occasions where I did want to and having the raw just gives you a bit of extra flexibility um, in doing that. Uh, some of the images, again, because number two, I guess, because it, it was such a dull day, some of them benefited from some colour saturation enhancements and some white balance changes just to lift the general feel from being so grey and dull. Um, thirdly, some of the images that I took actually were better in black and white than I was expecting them to be. So I did a few raw conversions into um, into black and white. Um, it also, it, um, fourth reason, it gave me the opportunity to continue my kind of uh, comparison using some custom film profiles um, so that I set up them some custom film profiles, some black and white ones, a kind of a normal black and white one plus one with a bit of extra contrast and stuff, and then one with a lot of extra contrast, um, and and a um, an altered tone curve as well, and it gave me the opportunity to compare those as JPEG outputs to what I could achieve in, in RAW, doing a similar sort of thing post. So that was um, another reason. And fifth, and possibly the most important, arguably, of all of those, of all of the reasons for having the RAW was that because some of the photographs are interiors inside the house and the light was poor outside, some of the rooms were very dark anyway, and the um, camera was using ISO. I left it at auto ISO, but my uh, maxed out auto ISO range was at 6,400. And that does lead to fairly noisy images on occasion. So I was grateful having the raw so that I could do some um, noise reduction stuff in Darktable. Um, yeah, so let's look through some of the individual images uh, and do some comparative stuff and just, um, yeah, see so what they're like. So looking first at an example where I've lifted shadows, 
you can see in this, um, it was actually described as the, I think, a kind of a summer house. Um, and it's an interesting building. Um, it's made of brick and it's a small round, a small circular building, not round, small circular building. But there were a lot of, you know, it's quite dark inside, despite the fact it's got reasonable windows. And as you can see, being able to lift the shadows there, I think, has made quite a significant difference to the to the final image. And here we have an image that was taken next to the windows, and I quite like the tree outside. So kind of the view outside was as important as the panelling work next to the window. But I did want to lift that panelling work just just slightly, um, just to give it a little bit more emphasis. And there was some decent light on it. As you can see, there were points in the day where it was actually sunny outside and we had some decent light coming through. So being able to lift those the shadows there on the woodwork, I think makes a massive difference to that particular image. As I'd said, it was a very, very flat lighting day. As you can see, this is um, an outside view as we approach the main house. And being able to, you know, being able to having the full, I guess, capabilities of manipulating the saturation, the white balance, the contrast, all of these things, uh, having kind of the full toolbox at your disposal is, is I think, you know, I mean, why would you not? So I think that's um, that's kind of why you really need. The raw images as well as the jpeg i mean the jpeg was okay but it's i just think it's enhanced a bit by the by using the raw image and again an, another outside shot where you know i mean again this was probably the best part of the day as you can see there's blue sky behind the house um and the light not 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 awful um but i think it just needed a little bit of a lift maybe you know i've overdone the um the blue sky a little bit there but I feel it's um, to make it a worthwhile image. It just needed that little bit, uh, that little bit of work. A couple of examples where I, th I think um, a black and white image turned out better than um, colour. I wasn't really aware of that at the time. So, firstly, looking at this bust of uh, Henry VIII, and, and it's actually it's it's fine in this in in color I, quite, I still quite like it it's almost kind of duotone there's just two real there's two real colors to it the light brown and the the dark brown of the of the bust itself but again i think in in, in black and white it's just different it's not necessarily better i, I probably prefer it but yeah it's personal taste Another example, actually, in the same room on the other side of the uh, other side of the same room was this uh, a lone chair, and again, I think it just works better in black and white. Although, you know, it, again, it's really very debatable. And in fact, the black and white image it always looks like it's snowing outside. It wasn't. Continuing my um, custom film profile experiments, um, I. I've got this um, black and white contrasty film profile adjustment, I guess is what you'd call it. So the standard JPEG, first of all, um, again, this is of that, uh, that, that summer house type building, which we saw in the first image. This is an outside view of the building. Here's the tweaked profile with higher contrast and then the super contrasty image and something that I've worked up from the raw in dark table. To be honest, you know, if you looked across um, for all four of these, it's very much a personal preference type. Call on to which one's more pleasing. I think they've all got merit. Yep, take your pick. Noise reduction, I'd mentioned, was a pretty, um, a pretty significant thing. And you probably can't see it quite so well unless you go into 100%. But some of these images definitely needed a um, a degree of noise reduction. They were quite, uh, as I said, the the camera was operating auto ISO, and it was up to six thousand four hundred. I think, to be honest, unless you actually magnified any of these images a fair degree, 
the noise isn't that apparent, even in the JPEGs. I mean, I felt better about applying the noise reduction when I was looking at them at 100% in Darktable, but to be quite honest, at a normal kind of um, large monitor magnification, it's not very much difference. It's not really that noticeable. I did mention um, the wildlife opportunities. So there is a bird hide and um, across a lake, oh, and uh, there's uh, there was lots of waterfowl out there. I think it was too far for me to generally um, for my lens combination to to reach. So I was um, you know I turned this into something that's really kind of an environmental image, and in fact. I think the best wildlife picture I took on the day, if this can actually count as wildlife, um, then th this is probably the one, I think. Yeah, it's definitely um, the best wildlife picture on that particular occasion. So definitely I'll be continuing with the RAW plus JPEG because there's definitely um, some, some merit to, to having the RAW files uh, just in case you want to do something um, with them afterwards and on this occasion I felt it was really necessary to have the raw files as well just to bring out that um, bring out the best in the uh, in the images some of the JPEGs though just to finish off with a couple of them where I just left them purely as uh, just the JPEGs I think they're absolutely fine uh, this piece of stonework this eagle outside I don't think it would be improved I don't think there's much I could do to improve it um, so there are definitely some there that were, you know, definitely took some images where I think it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't necessarily, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't in any way necessary to do anything further with the images. But yeah, the experiment continues. <laughs>